quarter. is also made from Napa cabbage, but this one has focused mostly on the leaves of the cabbage, the outer leaves, and left the, uh, the, the broad white inner part behind. The next one is a kimchi that's made from cucumbers, and this really looks like, you know, kimchi is sometimes called a pickle. Korean pickle. Well, this, these really look like pickles. The next one is made from Chinese chives with a lot of red pepper, red chili paste mixed in with it. The next one is made from scallions. And then they do a lot of kimchi made from radishes. Uh, this is big, broad chunks of Korean radish in this one right here, mixed with the red pepper. And you see a little liquid in the bottom of that. And this one comes from a much smaller radish that has leaves attached to it, and they like to keep uh, the, the, a bit of the stems of the leaves on, and then more of the radish leaves are put in the pot along with that. Um, there's something, I think, not everybody loves, not all Westerners love kimchi. I do. Um, but there's something about kimchi that's a little bit different in its, in its basic aesthetic. You know, we're, we're used to eating things that I think are salty, uh, I'm sorry, that are hot and also sweet, or hot and um, maybe uh, a little sour at the same time, or, or quite sour at the same time. But kimchi has a funny blend of flavors. I, I would say what's going on here basically is that it's salty and it's hot. And I'm not so used to those two things coming together. It takes a little getting used to. It is also a little bit sour, just a little bit sour. They don't add vinegar to it, but in this fermentation process, a little bit of sourness comes out. I should point out to you, I was saying before that you can get it at the store. Here's some commercial packagings of uh, kimchi that you could just uh, go to the store and buy. These are made from various kinds of things. These, I think, were purchased in California, where there's a rather wide range of kimchis available. Um, okay, well, that's the basic kimchi course. If you come back in a moment, I'm going to show you how to make a couple of kimchis. Alrighty, um, <laughs> some of that chili pepper and the kimchi is getting to me. Um, the wonderful kimchi that I showed you a few moments ago came from a restaurant in New York called Wu Chan, which uh, is the best Korean restaurant uh, that I've been to in uh, in New York City. Um, and when you go there, it's great. You'll just get like uh, about 12 of those things laid at your feet as you start your meal. Uh, but if you want to make great kimchi at home, stick with me for a few minutes because I'm going to show you how to make a couple of simple kimchi. And it's really, really, really easy to do. Uh, one thing that I like about it is, you know, people get a little spooked out about uh, putting up things that are preserved because you've got to get a good seal on the jar and you've got to sterilize the glass and all that kind of stuff. But when you make kimchi, you don't have to do that. Um, I, will, I will show you. Uh, the first pickle that I'm going to make is a very very simple one. It's ubiquitous on Korean tables, and it's just, it's a radish pickle. The Koreans love radish. Here's a big white Korean radish, um, and very often they'll cut this into big chunks or into julienne strips or whatever. There's different sizes. It's part of the variety of kimchi. Uh, this is a smaller one, a younger one, that still has the leaves attached, and sometimes they'll make a, um, a, a radish kimchi with the leaves mixed in, or sometimes they'll just make a kimchi out of the leaves alone. Um, I've got here a pound of Korean radish cut into strips. You can see the size that I've chosen to use today. And in this jar, I've got two cups of, of cold water. I've got uh, two teaspoons of salt. I've got a teaspoon of sugar mixed together. Everything's blended in. And then, I mean, does cooking get any simpler than this? You take the radish strips and you mix them in. If you can't find Korean radish, you could use daikon, Japanese radish, or you could use other types of radish, or you could use turnip, or you could use whatever the heck you want. Get creative with your kimchi. Um, okay, that's all mixed in there. You want a little heat in this, as you usually do. Uh, this, is, this kind of kimchi is very light and clean and crispy and crunchy. So notice that I'm not mixing in the heavy red pepper flake routine. I'm just putting in a green chili. And that will uh, let its influence be known. Cover it up. I want, you to keep this at room, I want you to keep this at room temperature for two or three days. And after a day or so, you're going to hear, especially without having a really tight seal on here, you're going to hear it's starting to ferment. And it, it converts, and it really gets like a pickle and picks up a slightly sour taste. And it's really wonderful. Uh, so let's uh, put that away for two to three days. That's 
kimchi number one. Kimchi number two is going to be a cucumber kimchi, and kim three, kimchi number three is going to be the traditional Napa cabbage kimchi. And I'm going to start those both at the same time because they both undergo an initial salting. Um, here's cucumber. Use the Kirby's for this. And to make this recipe, you start with uh, four Kirby cucumbers. Uh, All together, that'll be about one pound of cucumber. And it's very simple. For starters, you just cut it in half the long way, like that. And then cut this into uh, four sections. And here you go. Now I've got the Kirby cucumbers there. I need to mix them together with some salt. And I've got about three tablespoons of coarse salt here. And you want to put that in the, um, you know, put it in the top of a sieve like this and put a weight on it so that uh, some of the water will come out of the cucumber. And keep it there for uh, a couple of hours or an hour or so or maybe a little bit more until you've got a nice drain occurring. And then you'll have something that looks like this. You see the salt is all melted down. And look at all the liquid that, that has come. Let's see if you can see. Yeah, you see it on the side there. See all the liquid that's come out of this. I'm going to drain that away. Meanwhile, Okay, let's look at our cabbage. Get these both started at the same time since it's essentially the same process. Here I've got, sorry about that. Here I've got a, uh, a large head of Napa cabbage. This is also called Peitsai in Chinese, but it's Napa cabbage. Get a large knife to cut it. Just cut it in half, like that. And then you want to salt this as well. This is with uh, four tablespoons of coarse salt. Can you see this? You spread out the leaves a little bit as you're, as you're salting. Like that. And the other one. Looks like a lot of salt, but you're going to drain it away later. And try to get it nicely distributed among, throughout, within, over, and below the leaves. Okay. So we're going to let that drain for a couple minutes. Now I've got my cucumbers draining, I've got my cabbage draining. I'm going to show you the flavorings that go into the cucumber kimchi. Here's what I'd like you to mix together. Three scallions that have been finely chopped. There they are. Um, A small onion, finely chopped. This will be about half a cup of chopped onion. Ten Chinese chives cut into one inch pieces. A quarter cup of finely minced carrot. This is a colorful one. I like the way the orange of the carrot gets um, highlighted in this thing. Here's something really interesting I want to show you. You see this? This is a a Korean specialty called uh, sewojut. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Sewojut. And it's, look at it. You see those little eyes there? These are tiny. Can you see the eyes on that? Those are tiny shrimp that have been salted. And uh, as I told you before, they often use uh, seafood in their kimchi. So you have about three tablespoons of baby salted shrimp that go in this. There they are. Uh, Two tablespoons of finely minced garlic go in as well. And a teaspoon of minced ginger root. And lastly, but not leastly, um, a, um, two tablespoons of hot red chili powder. You could use red pepper flakes if you can't find this stuff, but it's really good to go to an Asian market and get this kind of thick, pasty chili powder. And you mix all this stuff together. And you add about two tablespoons of hot water. There's one, there's two, okay. And now, you take the cucumbers that have been salted, you drain them out, you put a little bit of cold water over that just to drain off some of the salt. I would taste it at this point to make sure that it's not too salty or not too unsalted, because I like to have a little salt in there. Take a little nibble. It's about perfect. Okay, and then you toss with this. And that's it, you're ready for stuffing into the jar. This one, um, you would sit at room temperature for about 24 hours. And it's a really nice tasting fresh pickle. I tried to keep it for longer than 24 hours, but I found that the pickle started to take on that sort of watery um, color inside that, you know, I always avoid when I'm buying pickles in a jar in a supermarket. So I like this one as a fresh kimchi, about 24 hours or so, and so on. You know, make sure that you get all the liquid in there and cover it up and close it. And then you've got a wonderful cucumber kimchi. Okay, let's take a look at the cabbage. 
These guys, I just did a moment ago, let's take those away. These guys I have been, I've had salted for uh, an hour or two. And look at all the liquid that's come out of it. Once again, you want to drain it. Make sure that it's not too salty, but always taste it because it should have some salt taste. So you want to make sure that there's enough salt in there. If there's not, then you would add a little more salt to it. Mm, that's perfect. Right there. And what I like to do is cut it this way. I sort of leave larger pieces at the end here because I like these big leafy pieces that come up in the kimchi. So I cut it kind of, kind of like this at the end. When I get up here, I don't like the, um, the, the wide chunks quite as much in big pieces. So I, I cut it into smaller pieces up at this top, up at this end of the, uh, uh, of the cabbage. Okay, about like that. I'm do that with two of these. Wider pieces here, wider pieces here, shorter pieces here. Let me show you what this uh, kimchi is. It's four, four garlic cloves cut in thin matchsticks, a teaspoon of julienne strips of ginger, six fat scallions, halved lengthwise and cut into three inch pieces. This kimchi traditionally has these big pieces of scallion in it, but also two scallions that have been sliced thin. Two tablespoons of fish sauce. The fermented fish sauce of Asia goes into this dish as well. And three tablespoons of hot red chili powder. And here's that stuff again. This is what gives it that wonderful color. And you can use more of that if you like or less. It's up to you, all according to your taste. Mix that together. And of course, mix this together with the cabbage. Ooh, I'm just going to get my hands in here and have a good time. Look at that. <clears throat> and then... Of course, you're going to put it in the jar and put it up. Now, what you should do is let this sit at cool room temperature for about 24 hours to get the fermentation process starting. And then put it in the refrigerator, and then it's up to you. You can keep it. I would say, now, here, here's a choice you have. If you keep it for like just a day or two beyond that, it's going to have a very fresh character, which is nice in itself. But you can keep it for five days more, or you can keep it for a couple of weeks more. And to the Koreans, usually, the longer it sits, the better it gets. Try it. Try it along the way. Don't be afraid to break the seal. You can open it and taste it and see which stage you like it at best. Well, come back in a moment, and I'll show you how this is traditionally eaten at the Korean table. Welcome to Dave's Korean Restaurant. It's Woo Dave and Woo Kimchi. These, these, oh, I tasted these guys as they came out of the jars. They're really good. Um, the cabbage kimchi, the classic. Uh, I made this one uh, about a week ago. And then the radish kimchi, which I made um, just about three days ago. And then the cucumber kimchi, which I made yesterday. Now, um, as I told you before, these are normally served in the Korean restaurant as accompaniments to rice and eaten along with your, your main course. I mean, you can eat it with your appetizer, too, if you can't wait for your kimchi. So I'm going to sort of arrange these along the side of my main course here. And what I've got is one of those great Korean steaming bowls of soup. It's warm in Korea. That's why I put my sweater on. Um, and um, they serve these. Uh, they're really into short ribs and beef bones. This is called beef bone soup. And this is a wonderful deep, dark beef broth. Uh, in which these, um, these short ribs have cooked and it's got carrot in it and some peppers and some um, mushrooms and sprinkled with chili powder, of course, and all kinds of things. So, well, let me just go about my business here and, you know, show you what I would do. This is Dave in a Korean restaurant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm eating my beef soup. Oh, it's really good, too. And I am taking a little bit of my rice out of the rice bowl. And then it's time to attack. I would probably go with this one first. This radish one, as I told you before, is very light. Um, it's sort of like a garnish on the plate. Super yummy. Cucumber. That's exactly the aesthetic I was talking about before. It's salty and hot. And, um, yeah, very, very good. And let me try the basic. Wow. They're also light and crunchy and full of flavor. And they're great with the hearty Korean food, whether it's a big um, bowl of beef soup like this or whether it's 
sautéed squid served with noodles, or whether it's the most ubiquitous Korean dish, they put a brazier in the middle of the table and they grill all forms of, especially beef, but other meats and fish over the coals in the middle of the table. It's a great cuisine if you haven't tried it. You should go to a Korean restaurant. Um, this Korean beer. It's called OB. This is OB Dry. And I find it a very good crisp accompaniment to the Korean food. Let me see if I find it that way again. I do. And that's the deal. Make these. You see how simple they are. I, th these jars you can buy for like $3.69. You know, just go out and buy a couple of jars. And you've got a really um, neat new way to dazzle your friends at a dinner party. Well, come back see me again sometime soon. I had a good time. I hope you did. And remember, life, as always, is a matter of taste. Goodbye. Let Food Network take you away with the flavors of the Caribbean. Watch Jamaican Me Hungry, Saturday, starting at 1 Eastern, only on Food Network. Full of flavor.